Uh, Dion Stachman, absolutely a pleasure to have you back on Boots and All. Um, I saw you a week ago at the Bulls Golf Day, and the one thing I picked up, and it's going to give the guys a bit of uh, background as well, was that there is a sense of quiet confidence creeping into the side, especially given the tough start you had to the season? <clears throat> yeah, I wouldn't call it quite confidence. Uh, yeah, we just we just enjoyed the day the day with each other, uh, having a nice round of golf, uh, listening to some of your silly jokes, and uh, <laughs> yeah, just just had an awesome time with each other. Uh, I'll forgive that because they were silly. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hand you over to these guys uh, very sh uh, shortly. But you've played Western Province twice already this season, <clears throat> lost both of the matches. You go into this match pretty much as underdogs, but it's not necessarily a bad thing, is it? Yeah, it's not always bad to, to carry the underdog tag. Um, I think we definitely are, had a hard look at both of those matches and I think we, we learned a lot out of them and yeah, hopefully we can make some few new plans uh, that can come through this weekend. Now, from talking about underdogs, I'll hand you over to the big dogs. Yeah. Well, our first question, uh, Saturday, we always see you scoring those tries with the driving malls, like slow. And Saturday we saw you pumping down the line there with <laughs> determination and, and absolute grunt. Uh, yeah, I actually was a sprinter at school, so I, I wanted to back myself, but uh, unfortunately all the injuries and uh, uh, the age uh, caught up with me. Uh, uh, Stachis, uh, po Pollard, let's talk a little bit. I mean, we <clears throat> want to talk about the final, but it's so important for, I think, for South Africa to have him back playing. And in the Curry Cup, that's what we want to see. I mean, what a fantastic player to have. Yes, he's definitely on form. He's playing some awesome rugby, especially for the Springboks. Uh, yeah, it was so nice seeing two uh, Bulls players winning the, the test for the Springboks yeah. against the All Blacks. Um, so yeah, it's very nice to have uh, uh, Andre back in, in our team. Uh, unfortunately for Berger, I think he also had an awesome season. Um, but luckily, we've got a guy like Andre Pollard to back him up. How serious is his arm? The Berger broke his arm? No, it broke his arm. Serious? Uh, so it's about yeah, uh, eight weeks. Yeah. John, just coming, you know, look at, looking at your guys' season, a slow start, a lot of pressure, a lot of people didn't think you could make the semi-final or be, be in this position. What, when did it change and what did you guys do differently, if you did anything at all? Yeah, I think uh, we, we, we started with the both uh, the, the top form sides of the competition uh, away from home. So it always was going to be difficult. And um, yeah, we had a lot of criticism and was under a lot of pressure. Uh, and I think all, all that draw the guys together. And uh, I think uh, there was just little things that we needed to fix. And uh, luckily we were able to do that. And uh, I think also the guys is more, uh, have gelled more than uh, as a side. And uh, yeah, the confidence is a bit, is, is, is much better after some wins uh, the, the last couple of uh, games. I think it would have been, it would be fair to say that the uh, Bulls are on an upward trajectory in, in the uh, Carry Cup and in fact, certainly are playing better than you started the season, but it exploded into a tri-fest for particularly Bjorn Basson last weekend. I thought he was absolutely superb. Getting to his 50th um, carry cup try, guys, and I'm sure you want to jump in here as well, but to have him back and back in this form must be great. Yeah, definitely. I think Bjorn is a special player. Um, unfortunately, uh, injuries also uh, kept him out of the game for a while. But uh, yeah, him coming back in this form is definitely a huge boost for our side and it, it's very exciting seeing him playing like this. Because you can work as hard as you like, but if you don't have the guys out wide like Bjorn to finish it all off, AJ. But you just mentioned it, to play your 50th and to play your 100th game, those are big games. But to score three tries in your 50th game, you can't ask for better. Can't you? I mean, it's fantastic. I was so happy for him to, to, for him to have that. It's fantastic. Well, he's not the only key player, and uh, one of the players that you guys have highlighted is Jacques Duplessis as we look closer to, to where Stacky's plays his trade. Another key player for you guys, great to have his bulk, his size, he's got speed for such a big guy. Well, I think he, he definitely impressed with his, uh, with his speed and bulk. Uh, yeah, he scored some, some awesome tries, uh, um, and yeah, he's a big guy to stop, so yeah, hopefully he gets, uh, he gets us some front football this weekend. Yeah, just, just going back to, to the way you guys played, you, you saw you guys trying to run the ball a bit more. Was that, was that a change in philosophy or generally maybe less reliant on teams figuring out your, your, your kicking plays in terms of handling the, the high balls? I think it's, it's, it's more a thing of uh, trying to keep the other team guessing. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, luckily it worked for us. And uh, yeah, we, I think we scored some great tries against uh, the Greek West. I think there was definitely a lot more that we could have scored. Uh, so uh, yeah, but it, that left something to work on this week. Yeah, just talking about the injury to Berger Underdale, obviously crucial term, you know, in terms of getting momentum. He's, he's a Bulteria in that midfield. He gets over the advantage line. Pollard, a different player, more of a thinking player, more of a passer. 
Is that going to change the strategy at all? Have you guys looked at the way they're going into Cape Town? <clears throat> you know, it changes four times in one day there. So what plans do you have or is, uh, is there something you guys have thought about? I think Andre will, will definitely bring something different. Uh, um, but he's also an exciting player. He's a good ball carrier. Uh, he's also good with his kicking. Um, so that gives you another, another option with the kicking as well. Um, but yeah, Berger really, I think he was a good carrier. He definitely got us some uh, front foot ball and he's got very good feet. Um, so we, we're definitely going to miss him. Another player you're going to miss, uh, and particularly given how well he's played, uh, not just now, but even in Super Rugby, Paul Willemse. Uh, this is going to be, well, these are his last two weeks of Carry Cup. Hopefully his last uh, match will be next weekend. Yeah, we actually spoke about him uh, this week. Uh, uh, normally, I mean, if you get one big hit by a player, it's 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 good for uh, in a game. But Paul Willems, uh, I don't know how he gets it right, but he makes like three or four huge tackles mm -hmm. in a game. And uh, yeah, his timing is always just great. And uh, yeah, he's definitely uh, our physical guy on the side. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're definitely going to miss him. It's unfortunate for South African rugby as well that he must leave uh, for France. Uh, but yeah, we um, definitely wish him well on his on his endeavours. John, does it affect you guys? You look at the Bulls, you guys have a lot of players leaving the last two, three seasons. You sort of stuck there and been there from when you played under 21 rugby. Do you think maybe some guys are leaving too early? A guy like Willems is a phenomenal player. You know, if he sticks around, he could have the opportunity to possibly go for a World Cup. Nice throwing it away to go to France. You know, what's the message? How does it disrupt you guys? What advice would you give to youngsters? Yeah, that's a very difficult question. Um, I think it's definitely it's a personal thing. Um, each guy's uh, story is, is different. Um, so I think in the end, at the end of the day, you've got to look at what, where you are and uh, what you want to achieve and uh, base your decision on that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's unfortunate for a guy like Paul Willems leaving South Africa because I really think he's, uh, he's a special player. I think uh, us, you all con conservative and I understand that it's a business. And, and, I, and I'm sad to see Paul Willems go. Um, but each enough, we've got families, and you got. And when, if it's better to go overseas, you have to go. I, I always say good luck to the boys, and hope we see you back one day. I think that should be more the the, the attitude, and not when a guy go overseas. We know we don't really want to see you at this yeah. moment. I like think it's the disappointment jail, you know? of of knowing that you've got these yeah. talented youngsters who could possibly um, make it there for for the Springboks and mm. uh, might be missing out on the chance. Sure.